Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you wherever you are around the world. And welcome to Fjellraven Polar winner announcement for Fjellraven Polar 2023. My name is Carl Hordav Segerstad and I work as event manager for Fjellreven. And I'm super happy to be standing here together with uh, Sofia. Welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm a Fjellreven friend since many years back and I am also super excited to be here today yes. uh, to share this moment and uh, present the winners of Fjellreven Polar 2023. Before we take off, uh, just uh, a quick reminder that you can post questions all along the way and we will pick them up in a Q&A um, later on today as well. Uh, I think that many of you were part of the launch event six weeks ago, but in case you were not, call what is Fjellaven Polar? So Fjellraven Polar is really a 300 kilometer long dog sled expedition from northern part of Sweden th across the Arctic tundra to the fjords in northern Norway. And it is a dog sled expedition where you get to drive your own dog sled and spend the night in the tents and learn a lot about both the dogs and yourself and the outdoor life in general. So we have actually been overwhelmed by the number of uh, applications this year. Really? Uh, so talking about the applications, who can actually apply for this? So anybody could apply. Uh, now the application is closed, but uh, we had a lot of applications. Uh, it was an easy process to apply. And then we had three challenges that you responded to over Instagram. And uh, we have uh, had a heavy job to select 20 of all those participants or applications to go to Fjellraven Polar. And we will for sure be back <laughs> to the winner announcement. But first, why do you from Fjellraven, why do you do Fjellraven Polar? So uh, inspiring people to spend in time in nature is actually what it's all about. That is something that is super important for us as a brand. And uh, I think it's personally super important important for everybody to spend time in nature. So uh, we want to inspire people to do that. And that's why, why we do Fjellar and Polar. And we also think that uh, this event here today is going to be filled with uh, nice and good inspiration. Uh, and uh, we have about an hour to go. Uh, and let's start by looking at the agenda. Uh, so, Carl, you just started uh, telling a little bit about Fjellraven Polar, uh, but then we're also, of course, going to address uh, what has happened since the opening of the application period. Uh, and, uh, of course, I am sure everyone is really excited to see the winners. Yes, and we will present the winners in four blocks of five winners in each film and we'll present them with the Instagram handle and the country where you guys come from that will be uh, going to the next year's Fjellam and Polar. And then we will also, during that, uh, in the bridges between the presentations of winners, we will uh, look at the different challenges that you guys have uh, done uh, in this application period and, and see how you addressed our questions and that uh, and then we will uh, kind of wrap it up a little bit and uh, explain what happens next and uh, so on. So um, if we start with what happened since the launch event, what has happened during these past six weeks? Yeah, uh, when we closed the last show when we were standing here, we did that by opening the application and uh, posting the first challenge. And uh, that first challenge was to explain your motives, why you would want to go to Fjellar and Polar, right? And little did we understand or expect the inspirational power that this really had to people. So we have previously been at approximately 2,500 people applying for Fjellar and Polar. This year we ended up uh, closing at 15,000 application almost, 14. 1,640. That must be quite tough work going through all these uh, applications. 
Yeah, super tough. And but most of all, I mean, it struck us that okay, we thought we started like an kind of competition for this expedition, but but it feels much more that we started a movement for outdoor life in the winter time and and uh, the creativity and the ambition and the, all the inspiration that people have shared with each other and with themselves uh, makes us super humble and thankful for, for all the time and effort that people have put in. It's totally mind-blowing. Uh, so so uh, we feel a great responsibility for this and to continue to enable outdoor life and uh, to make uh, make uh, winter more accessible. That's, that's uh, on our shoulders now. For sure. And uh, I know there has been a lot of people involved in this process. Uh, and uh, the jury members, they've taken their, uh, this uh, job very seriously and they have done uh, quite a job uh, totally. selecting totally. these. Totally. Uh, so so uh, we uh, had... Uh, the ambition, we thought we were going to go through maybe two to three thousand applications and then when we ended up with that incredible number, we've had uh, almost uh, more than 50 people involved in uh, going through all the applications and the screening and then we handed over a list of 300 uh, applications to the final jury that helped us make the selection. So, uh, Carl, let's uh, introduce the jury members. Yes. Bob Ektolaway from Sweden is a Polar alumnus of 2016. He is an outdoor leader and counselor. He thinks nature is the only thing that treats humans equally, regardless of who they are or where they're from. 2014 Polar alumni Jun Hee Cho hails from South Korea, where he is an outdoor leader. His words of wisdom for this year's participants are, leave the fear of new challenges at home and pack your anticipation and excitement into your backpack. Fjell Raven takes care of the rest. Karl Hordas Segerstad from Sweden is Fjell Raven's global event manager. His role is to create a safe and memorable experience for the participants where they can learn from nature. Ian Finch from the United Kingdom is a 2022 Polar alumni. He is an Explorers Club member, expedition leader, and photographer. For him, the underlying beauty of Polar is defined by purity and the wilderness. Austria's Linda Meixner is a free-ride skier and outdoor leader. She is also a Polar alumni of 2022. Her experience has taught her that we are capable of much more than we think. She says working outside with animals and with your own hands for warm food or a place to sleep is incredibly satisfying. George McKenzie Jr. from the United States is a 2022 Polar alumnus. He is an Explorers Club member and photographer. His Polar experience made him fall in love with the Arctic, which he found to be exceptionally clean and humbling. Sweden's Mi Toninelli is global social media manager at Fjell Raven and a 2022 Polar alumni. She is convinced that when you reconnect with nature on such a fundamental level, you grow a confidence from within that you will carry with you for the rest of your life. Evelina Nordin from Sweden is a 2022 Polar alumna. She is also the granddaughter of Fjallraven's founder, Åka Nordin. She doesn't want our wasteful ways of living to continue to taint clean, beautiful, and untouched territories like the Arctic. American Emily Ford is a Fjallraven guide, hiker, and winter native. Her words of wisdom for the participants are, have a good time. You are working with beautiful animals in a fantastic place on the planet. It will be hard, but it will be rewarding. So welcome Evelina and Ian Thank to the much. studio. Uh, so now we have three jury members here. So let's uh, ask some questions. Uh, to start with, Carl, I'll, uh, I'll uh, turn to you. Tell us about the process, the jury yeah. process. Yeah, as I was saying to before, we had a lot of applications and uh, that made us uh, work with a lot of people that we had to brief on uh, how to make the first selection. So all these people helped us to uh, go through all the applications that had been submitted and uh, screen them and then uh, select the the best 
applications uh, to to pass on to to the jury members, and uh, that was a quite uh, time-consuming process, but it was also very rewarding and interesting, and we got so much inspiration from all the applications. It was fantastic. So, Kalle, the number of applications, uh, was that expected at all? No, uh, not at all, actually. Or Obviously, it did inspire people to a large extent, and that is fantastic. Uh, so we are so grateful and thankful for that. And uh, yeah, it just shows that uh, the, the aspiration and the ambition to spend time in nature is really fantastic. So, uh, Ian, um, this job in the, in the jury group, mm -hmm. um, how challenging was that? Yeah, for personally for me, I found it inc incredibly challenging. There were so many variations of people, like shapes and sizes, personalities, and we had to go through everybody's Instagram and look at what, what was really motivating these people to come on this trip. Um, and I found, I found it incredibly difficult to choose. Yeah, I, it was very difficult to just wean that down to a you know, small number of people. So was it something specifically that you uh, were looking for in the applications? I think it was someone who was just embodying what Fjallraven was about, about their connection to nature, why they want to explore. Um, so I was really looking into those and listening to what they were saying, looking into their Instagram and thinking, okay, what person would really benefit the most by going on this and embodies the spirit of the adventure? So, Evelina, what was your tactics uh, when you were looking at the applications? I can vouch for that with what Ian's saying, but also since um, I am quite young on the younger spectrum of people who have gone in the past, I was, I want to encourage more younger people to go out. So when I was looking through um, the applications, I was uh, looking at more young and more new to nature in that sense. And also um, just having someone and looking at someone like who can I present, see be with me when I'm on Pilar in that sense. Yeah. And uh, were there any surprises when you were going through the uh, applications? A lot of good surprises. There was a lot of variety on what kind of posts were posted. There was a lot of pictures, a lot of um, illustrations, videos. And to me, there was a lot of uh, surprises when it came to specifically the sustainability motive of the creative ideas that people had um, when, uh, for example, saying you can use outdoor, in, uh, outdoor furniture as indoor furniture and just very many creative ways to approach sustainability it was surprising to me. Yeah. Was it a fun job? Yeah, yeah. Very good. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, for you, was it fun? Yeah, it was amazing. Uh, really uh, touching to see uh, how how much ambition and inspiration and creativity there is out there, and and uh, it was just endless. And uh, yeah, I think it's about time to to uh, have a look at the first the set of winners. What do you guys think? Yeah, it's time. Yeah, it's time. definitely so, time. Uh, <laughs> let's have a look. The first five Fjall Raven Polar 2023 participants are the first participant from France. There are a lot of little actions and gestures that I do to reduce polluting impact on the nature. Do some compost, eat more vegetable and local, search water at the source and produce less plastic. The second participant from Germany. My main goal is to help reducing negative impact on the planet and saving the beauty of nature and spreading the message of our climate crisis. I learned to be attached to nothing but being connected to everything. The third participant from the United States. The fourth participant from Taiwan. And the fifth participant from Sweden. Congratulations.
So, uh, congratulations to the first five winners. As you see, we have already a great variation over nationalities and across the globe. And uh, we will continue through the show here to fill out this board of uh, 20 winners. Um, and uh, as you saw in the entries here, there is a lot of different motivations and uh, reasons why people applied. And uh, that is uh, fantastic to see. Uh, and one of those that have spe special motives and uh, reasons to be at uh, Fjellöv and Polar and special connections, that's you, Evelina. Yes. <laughs> Not only a jury member this time, but you were also on the test trip that we made this spring, uh, relaunching Fjellöv and Polar. And, and you have a special connection to the brand. Yes, um, my grandpa is Åken Odin, the founder of Fjellreven, and also the one part of the amazing half that created Fjellreven Polar. And um, yeah, it's uh, kind of inspiring to actually go on such a trip that he has created and um, actually see what it is he means by sending out this message. Yeah, and, and uh, like what, uh, what uh, did it mean to you? What, uh, what inspired you to go to Fjellar and Polar? To me, it has always been a concept of Polar and all these um, experiences. And um, I've always wanted to experience it for myself. So when I got the opportunity, I jumped on that opportunity very quickly. Um, um, I'm very proud that I did because I found a lot within myself and I, f I figured out a lot about a lot about nature for myself. Um, it wasn't until this trip that I actually realized how much nature means to me and how much it can really calm me and um, challenge you at the same time. It's like the best of both worlds in that sense. And what do you think your grandfather would have said when he saw you there? I think he would have been proud, but also proud of himself to see that he himself has inspired others through the brand and also his his grandchildren and maybe children to go out and be in nature and that this legacy, in a sense, carries on through generations. And I'm very proud of myself that I get to live through that and continue that. Yeah, no, I mean, I must say for myself also, I'm super proud to be part of that legacy and, and to carry that on. So it means a lot to a lot of people. and. Uh, it's just uh, great to be a part of that. Um, so what was the toughest uh, thing for you during the expedition? Oh, good question. The toughest thing for me was honestly mentally preparing for it because I didn't know what to expect. I had previously walked classic and that was rather challenging for me. So I, was, I wasn't putting up any expectations. I was kind of going into it and being like, I'm going to take the challenge and fight through it with a good attitude because I know bringing negative attitude or being like, oh, I'm tired is just going to affect everyone around you. So it was more, I want to be there for myself as well as everyone else. Plus, who doesn't love dogs? And the dogs are challenging themselves. And yeah. yeah the dogs are fantastic. And uh, I mean, we are so dependent on them. And yeah. they are so dependent on us. <laughs> yes, so it's for a sure. Fantastic collaboration mm -hmm. there. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, I mean, Ork uh, used uh, experiences like Fjellrev and Polar and Fjellrev and Classic to, to develop products and to reiterate them and to refine them and to test them in the real world. And uh, that was a very important uh, piece of the work and process for him. Uh, which part of the equipment and the products did you enjoy the most at uh, Fjellrev and Polar? Uh, personally, from Fjellraven, I enjoyed the Expedition Pack Down hoodie that um, I'm wearing underneath my uh, rain jacket with my, fav my favorite jacket. And this um, jacket was very versatile in the sense of what it, um, what it did for us. It um, was one warm, a warm layer you can take on and off. It was also a very good pillow for when um, I was sleeping. Not only that, it was good cover when you were um, sleeping, but not only that, it was a good layer that kept you warm when you and allows mobility when you were cutting up the food for the dog, taking care of the dogs, and um, being on the sled and all. So the expedition 
pack down hoodie that you're referring to. It's like fantastic yes. layering piece. And uh, I mean, in not super cold condition, it's, it's like a great outer layer and it fits perfectly under your shell jacket. Or you can use the big parka uh, on top of it to like have this super power insulation and uh, then you won't freeze. So you did you have any other products that you appreciated? I did, <laughs> and this is one of my one of the favorite products, and it's a Primus uh, Primus Trail bottle um, water bottle that surprisingly has been one of my favorites that I've taken home. It's encouraged me to be more sustainable in the way I drink water. It's always with me in my school bags. It's always with me wherever I go, um, even at home. I use this more than glasses, to be honest. But it's so much more versatile than what you think because when we were in tents in these really cold conditions not only does it carry cold water but we put warm water in them and they were warm warm water bottles that you slept with to keep and uh, keep you warm and regulate that heat in the tent and it's just amazing i just love this water bottle and then you also <laughs> have the warm water accessible in the morning yeah. when you wake up you keep it warm through the night <laughs> as well really good so uh, thank you a lot, uh, Evelina, for, for sharing your experiences and um, great to have you here. Yeah, I'm thank you so much. I think it's so wonderful that you that you say that you used uh, the water bottle for other purposes as well, because one part of this whole experience is to learn, and you learn how to use your equipment as a system. So I think it's uh, it's. Uh, perfect way to address <laughs> that actually and thank you so much for being in the jury and of thank course. you for uh, inspiring us uh, to keep on uh, stay outside thank, thank you. you so with that said i think it is time to announce another five winners yes <laughs> <laughs> The next five Fjall Raven Polar 2023 participants are the sixth participant from the United States. See, I live in this little house in this oven. You can barely bake a mouse. It's pretty efficient, as you can see, but there's still things they do more sustainably. I've got all this beat up gear. I can make it last another year. Stick these patches on, wash them with gear. Looking so fly, all the haters stay clear. The seventh participant from Austria. The eighth participant from the United Kingdom. The ninth participant from France. My love for this planet pushed me to become vegetarian for five years and told me to travel slowly. I also worked in astronomy. We discovered several exoplanets. Such exciting news. The light. Thank you. The tenth participant from Denmark. Congratulations. So congratulations to those five that were uh, selected in this yeah. round. Now we're on ten. Now and we are five, <laughs> ten to go. Exactly. So we're halfway through. Uh, and this challenge was uh, all about how to prepare for a winter adventure or winter expedition. And with that said, I am happy to welcome back Ian Finch. Thank you. Um, you have been uh, on the Polar Expedition 2022. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, and we would like to talk a little bit about uh, expeditions in general, but uh, of course also about the 2022 experience. Uh, but first, what is your background regarding outdoor life? Yeah, so um, I've spent my life in the outdoors, really loving the outdoors, learning from the outdoors. But I really sort of cut my teeth with expeditions was when I was in the British Marines, which is a military unit in the UK. Um, and we specialised in training in Arctic conditions. So I spent um, time up in Norway, sort of modifying, specialising in surviving and understanding and thriving in, a, in an Arctic environment. Um, and when I came out of that, I went into expeditions, which just 
unfortunately, well, no, fortunately again, was all about cold weather environments. So I love expeditions, adventure and, and nature. So even though you have a great experience from before, uh, were you surprised at any of the events taken care, uh, um, uh, taken, uh, carried out during uh, Fjellven Polar? Sorry. Any, sorry. any uh, uh, were you surprised by, by any parts of Fjellven Polar? Was it difficult in any way, even though you have so much experience? Yeah, yeah. I think you, there's, when you go into these environments that are harsh and are challenging, I don't think you can prepare fully. Um, you can you can prepare with your uh, taking the right equipment, making sure you've got the, the right mental preparation. Um, but when you're out there, you've got to be flexible. You've got to stay flexible. Um, but also, you've you've got to kind of remove remove um, from yourself, remove the, the idea of looking at yourself and looking at your teamwork and making sure that your team are just as well prepared and mentally prepared, and also that you're you're working together as a team. And and that's the most important because you're more cohesive as a team. Yeah, no, no team is stronger than its weakest link, as you know. And That's uh, right. I mean, to elevate and help uh, the team members could be many times the best way to actually enhance the performance of the team. That's right. Yeah, definitely. So, so um, also, I mean, getting to an expedition, you know, you, you decide and many of you have now called out that you want to go or you will go do stuff in the winter. Like... If you have called it out and taken the decision, it's sometimes the hardest way is to get to the start line, right? Yeah, make it, making the decision to go and actually the committing is the hardest part. Um, preparation is always the hardest part. It's the more logistically difficult part of an expedition. But once you've got the preparation, the execution of going on the trip and being on the trip is the best part. It's actually probably the easiest part of all, really, just as long as you just stay flexible and, and help those around you. But what do you consider is the most important part when you are in the planning phase? Most important, the planning. Um, obviously, having the right equipment is is essential. Your equipment is what keeps you alive. Um, you know, you can mentally prepare and rehearse and all those kind of things, but you've got to have the right equipment. And also, the equipment um, is respective to the environment that you're in. So, having the right equipment for the environment that you're in. But there's also a lot of knowledge about the equipment, and uh, yeah. I mean, how to take care of the equipment and to manage the equipment and select the right equipment. That's it. And also in, in, in conjunction with the, the conditions that you're in and the changing conditions. So well, one of the things that I found on the Polar is, you know, you have to, um, when, you're on the, when you're with the dogs, you're wearing a certain type of clothing. And when you're moving and working and putting up the tents and getting the food ready, you're in a different sort of set of clothing. So you're kind of always upscaling and downscaling the equipment based on sort of the, what you're doing at the time. Yeah, so it's... So I know that you have okay. um, that you have mentioned before that a good way of planning a longer trip is to actually do a shorter one. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about that. Well, that's that's where the beauty is because the shorter ones are where we can do close to home uh, or close to where we live, and that's where you really look at the equipment that you've got. You can test the packs. You can look at how you carry stuff. Learn how what the equipment you're taking is the right equipment. Um, yeah, and that's the way you, you can really inject some fun into adventures and expeditions. So what uh, equipment were your favorite favorite one from uh, Fjellman Polar? Polar. I think it had to be sort of the thermal layers. Um, yeah, the, the thermal hoodie, which was my f absolute favorite, which I don't, I don't think I took off for four or five days, <laughs> to be honest. But yeah, you wear that in the sleeping bag and then you can wear that in your layering system, which you have on most of the time. Super. Thank you so much. No, my pleasure. Thank you. So, thank you for, for being here and uh, thank you for your work with the jury. That is uh, absolutely key yeah. for, for this uh, process, I would say. Um, it's about time to move on to, to uh, show a next set of winners, but we have had some technical issues with, uh, with the stream uh, when we were sending the last five. So, we will do those five again. So we'll see two films now with the winners uh, 6 to 10 and then 11 to 15. The next five Fjall Raven Polar 2023 participants are the sixth participant from the United States. See, I live in this little house in this oven you can barely bake a mouse. It's pretty efficient as you can see, but there's still things I do more sustainably. I've got all this beat up gear. I can make it last another year. Stick these patches on, washing the gear. Looking so fly, all the haters stay clear. 
the seventh participant from Austria. The eighth participant from the United Kingdom. The ninth participant from France. My love for this planet pushed me to become vegetarian for five years and told me to travel slowly. I also worked in astronomy. We discovered several exoplanets. Such exciting news. The light. Thank you. The tenth participant from Denmark. Congratulations. So that was uh, number six through 10. And uh, now we're gonna show the third winner film. So here we have number 11 to 16. The next five Fjall Raven Polar 2023 participants are the 11th participant from Estonia. The 12th participant from Germany. The 13th participant from Malaysia. Winter is coming. 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 The 14th participant from Colombia. I love challenges that help me to feel alive, love and free. Challenges remind me to appreciate the small things I give for granted and help me to become more grateful. To do an expedition to the North Pole is a dream for me. It probably represents the ultimate test. The 15th participant from Canada. Congratulations. So now we have 15 winners presented. Very big congratulations to all of you. We are holding on to the last five winners. And uh, this uh, challenge that we're going to talk about now, the third one was all about sustainability, how to lead a more sustainable life. And we saw some quite interesting examples in the films here. Did you notice that black screen on one of the... Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. That post was really interesting. Um, it was referring to how much energy we actually use when uh, being online. Yeah, I think we saw some great inspiration from this challenge, actually. Yeah, so big variety of how people would want to take more care and be more aware on how to lead a more sustainable life. And I think it's so important to actually, you know, once you post this, it's like taking, deciding, going for an expedition. If you post this and you declare it and you make it public, you have also committed to actually do this. Mm. By saying it, you're making it the truth. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, thank you for, for sharing all this. And I think it's about time that we share a little bit what, what we are doing. I mean, we, we try to take responsibility as well and to share a little bit on how we are working. We have uh, Felix uh, uh, that is working in our R&D department and with our material and uh, chemicals and uh, everything that is behind the scenes before the products really get ready. Welcome to Fjell Evan Polar Show. Thank Felix. you. Super nice to be here. In, in the, what do you do in your daily work? Can well, you describe a little bit? In, in my daily work, I'm responsible for the chemical part, like both compliance and then supporting the, both our material team and designers on, on their choices of uh, both fibers, materials, processes, 
And, and how, how is this uh, going to affect like uh, all of you guys watching and the, the people using products out in the outdoor life? Uh, well, the, the most obvious part, if you look at Polar and, and what you're going to experience and do and, and the garments and products you're going to use is the functionality. It's all about function. Uh, and you can achieve function in many different ways. Either you can choose fibers that has the properties you're looking for from start, like built in in the fiber yeah. its own own properties, or then you can take other materials and you can start adding chemistry or modify those fibers, uh, and all that's that's adding chemistry or adding processes to it. Which, if you have something that works as it is on its own, would be the more sustainable so choice. So, can in you many give cases. some examples, maybe, of uh, uh, material that are more that has these properties built into it? Yeah, one of the, the ones that pops up first would be wool. And it's such a marvelous little fiber. If you start looking into all the properties you have built in in this fiber without needing to add in or changing any processes in it, it you already have it. And it's like, hands moisture very well. It can both absorb moisture and repel moisture at the same time. It's kind of a specific thing. It, it isolates. And it's yeah, it, it's a thermoregulating, so it kind of helps you heat. It works both when it's cold and it when it's warm. Outside. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but at Polar, it's of course the, the thermal regulation or the insulating capacity that we are looking for. Yeah, yeah, looking exactly. for. So so how come it's so good uh, for for uh, thermal capacity? Well, uh, oh, that's because it has the pr pr the capacity to absorb moisture. And I mean, wool can absorb up to 30% of its own weight in, in moisture without feeling wet. And that's because it's encapsulated within the fiber. Uh, and that also allows it to keep the, the insulation. And, and the insulation from here comes from, from the fuzzy structure yeah. of the wool fiber. And then it's, it traps air. So that creates the, the isolation from it. Uh, you have another favorite uh, material when it comes to trapping air, right? Yeah, and then uh, that would be also a protein-based fiber, and that would be down. I mean, for, for cold, dry conditions, down would be the absolute best yeah, in yeah. terms of uh, isolating. And you have the packability, you can compress it, and these small, fantastic small down clusters will puff up when you allow them to, and trap a lot of air, which means a lot of, or not just a lot of air, it also keeps the air in the same place. It's not moving around, so yeah. you don't have these heat flows. So it's, yeah, it's that's a fantastic. Film. But but from your perspective, both those fantastic materials they share like also a common challenge when it comes to actually uh, producing products out of these materials. That's true, and, and I mean all materials have their risks uh, and linked to them. Uh, and for both wool and down, they are uh, animal derived, meaning that they come from animal. Uh, and I think the most obvious risk here is the animal welfare part. So how can we manage that? Uh, so for, for the wool, F11 is working with a New Zealand organization called ZQ, which help us trace back to the farms. We know which farms the wool is coming from. They have a strong environmental policy, both environmental and economical for, for the growers, but also the annual welfare. How you're sharing them and all this is incorporated in this, which is a super important part in creating a high quality fiber as well. And this is not always the case that you actually are able to trace wool back to the farm where, where the sheep actually were, were walking. No, that's true. That's a, a very specific process. For yeah, us. yeah. And, and the same goes a little bit for the down, right? True, true, true. And, and for the down, then you have the risk well, uh, that you have live plucking, meaning that you're pulling the feathers yeah. from a living hen. And for or not a hen, it would be a goose um, or geese. Uh, uh, and here we have a process where we know it comes from a controlled side stream from the meat industry, and we have the traceability from the farm, and it's sealed containers, we know. Yeah. It's our down that it's used in it, like a down promise. Um, so so that, that's a lot of what really happens behind the scenes that we normally don't really exactly. see. Thanks yeah. a lot for, for sharing. And I think we have a film that we can show uh, in regards to, to the down, right? Down is nature's most insulating material, lightweight and with amazing capabilities when it comes to trapping air. In 2014, we declared our down promise, now recognized as a leading initiative by the industry. 
We use three different construction techniques. The stitch construction is for light insulation. For added insulation, we use either a box construction or an offset construction. You can be sure it will function perfectly on many winter adventures to come. So uh, you're spending a lot of time in the outdoors yourself and have done a bit of expeditions. What do you appreciate from a product on an expedition? Uh, it's first of all the function, of course, and here, of course, if we talk different areas, it would be different functions. But I think a general common thing, especially if you're out for a few days uh, or even longer time than that, is the repairability that you're able to repair and doing those field repair uh, on your products. Uh, and that's one aspect of repair building that can also be linked to the sustainability part in it. I mean, there's so much studies showing that the biggest impact you can do is to use your products for a long, long, long time or hand them over to someone else that keeps them using them. Yeah. And here also repairability becomes a very important topic. So it's both a safety aspect as well as a sustainability aspect uh, exactly. to have yeah. the repairability of, of a product. That's very good. So, can, uh, uh, yeah, sorry. No, I mean, it can be a, such a small detail as the cord in the hood. If you're out and it's really, really cold and you have a blizzard, you will very quickly realize that a hood is not only a nice to have thing, but it would be a really crucial part of it. So here, like to be able to change the cord in the hood to make a snug fit, it's just a small detail, but super important when you're out. It is, it is. Uh, do you have any favorite products that you always bring on an expedition or when you go out? Uh, at the moment, what I'm wearing, I mean, I've been talking about wool already. <laughs> And I mean, the knitted sweater, and I think most of people would know me as the guy in the knitted sweater because I'm always using wool. And uh, yeah, the one I'm wearing now, I've yeah. been using so much during both the spring and now the start of the winter as well. No matter if I've been out hiking or picking mushrooms or playing with the kids or sledging. I mean, so. Thanks a lot for sharing. It's a lot of knowledge and so inspirational to, to hear you um, going down on these details. Yeah, I really do agree. And also thank you for helping us making more conscious choices uh, when it comes to uh, clothing and gear. So we are coming closer to the end. But before, uh, we would like to introduce the final five uh, winners. Yes. The final five Fjall Raven Polar 2023 participants are the 16th participant from the United States. A cursier hydrologist, this whose mission in life is to save the planet from, well, us, live a more sustainable life. Wait, 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 wait. Everybody doesn't do this? That sucks. The 17th participant from Finland. Lately, Polar has started to reappear in my dreams. If you do fall and let the sled go. Yeah, that's not the number one rule. You don't let go of the sled, period. The 18th participant from the Republic of Korea. The 19th participant from the United Kingdom. I think that's a dishwasher basket. It's all pens, makeup. Please take away your rubbish. Dispose of it properly. Recycle. Do what you should be doing to be a responsible adult. And the 20th participant from Sweden. At the end of this expedition next year, I uh, turning 60. So this is uh, my way to celebrate my life and to encourage myself that the best is yet to come. Congratulations. Congratulations to all of you 20 winners. Uh, I am super excited and I am sure that you are too. Yeah, fantastic. Big, big congratulations to the 20 of you and uh, really look forward to see you. Since we have had a little bit of technical hiccups along the presentations, I will actually repeat the Insta 
Instagram IDs of the 20 winners. So I do apologize already now if I mispronounce anything, but uh, the first, the, the 20 winners are in order of presentation. Mael YS, Foxy Kai, KTB17, Tina Hu, Tina Hu Hu, Limitless Shutter, Fetz Tango, Inky Land, MJF Thompson 01, Silas, Stogstead, Kivaste, Stein 0527, Ali Meran, Lina Baron Garcia, Konrad Vitasse, Adventure Hydrology, Elisa Nordman, Ainu Kihan, Bex Chapman, and Noshin's Page. Those are the 20 Instagram handles that are selected to go to Fjell Polar 2023. Congratulations. Congratulations. And I can just imagine the excitement that you feel right uh, right now. And I just wish I could see all your reactions out there at this very moment. Uh, Carl, I know that you have uh, uh, you have actually seen one of the reactions already yes. this morning. So earlier this morning, uh, me and Ian Finch had a blessing and the opportunity to actually call up one of the winners and uh, we have a, a recording of that call that we can see here. So I'm here with Ian Finch. Hi. And uh, Hi. we are both been working with the jury work for Fjellov and Polar. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, well, uh, I'd love to talk skiing with you, but the purpose <laughs> of this call today is actually that we uh, have the pleasure to tell you that you are one of the participants in the mm -hmm. expedition to Fjellov and Polar 2023. Yay! Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, really happy. I was so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> On a yeah. scale of 1 to 10, how happy? 11. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. So, uh, and it's a good thing that you're out in the cold. Uh, it's a little bit of preparation uh, almost, right? Yep, yes. It's good season starter, you know, to make your skin on the face a bit more <laughs> prepared for the Arctic. So, yeah. it's good to be up here in the north. Oh, that's great. I'm going to celebrate with this Monkey, donut <laughs> that I just bought. <laughs> and then I'm going to go snowboarding. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm. Ah, I'm thanks for happy. a great application. I mean, you did it on your own. No doubt yeah. about that. What's the one thing you're, you're looking forward to on the Polar? Oh, everything that the dog sledding itself. I think that because I've never been in a, in a husky sled. And also, people. I already know that Fjär Reven is really good with people. You choose really good people, so I'm, I'm sure there's going to be a really nice team. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. See you okay. later. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. So I'm also happy to say that we have Elisa Nordman uh, on the show on telephone. Elisa, I hope you can hear us. How are you feeling right now? Hi. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm I'm starting to realize uh, what I've done. So yeah, I was a bit shocked in the in the previous call. <laughs> yeah, I'm really happy. Thank you. Tell us where are you at the moment? I'm in uh, Finnish Lapland at the Pyha Fjell. <laughs> so it's here, here uh, way above the Arctic Circle. So it's it's a good place to start this winter and preparing. For sure, it is. So, have you done anything like this before? Never, no. I, I'm familiar with winter, but I've never been on a dog sledge. Not even as like a, like sitting there and somebody's driving it. So, yeah, it's going to be a completely new thing and I'm, I'm really excited. So, what uh, made you apply? Um, 
it's been uh, it's been my dream since uh, since uh, for a long time I've, I've i don't know i maybe 10 years i've always always like following the um and polar and all these uh, documents and stuff and in 2019 i applied first time and well it didn't happen because of covid and you know but this I thought, like, I'm going to give one more shot, and I'm happy I did it. Uh, so what are you looking forward to the most? Um, the whole thing. I, I I mean, I think it was a good preparation, this campaign, like, or this uh, applying thing, because you get all these different uh, emotions, and I'm sure I'm going to feel all those emotions uh, up there, too. So, yeah, I'm, I'm you know... Open-minded, I'm waiting all of it. <laughs> Super. So uh, in your video, we also saw that or heard that you got Carl's message, don't let go of the sled. So I'm sure you will <laughs> do super fine. Uh, but then just one final question. How will you celebrate this? Uh, I'm going to celebrate with my friends here. We have a cabin and um, maybe we... Uh, go to sauna and maybe swimming in the snow a bit. So <laughs> eating well, chantarelle risotto tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fantastic. Thank you so much, Elisa, for sharing this with us and for uh, making the call. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, you and so welcome. Much. Thanks. Bye bye. Uh, so, ah. Oh. How good energy was that? That's yeah. fantastic. She <laughs> fantastic. was really happy. And I mean, it was a little bit uh, mind-blowing for her this morning, I think. So good that we had a chance to catch up and uh, she was a little bit more uh, settled. And uh, yeah, it's for real. So, Carl, uh, now for all the, the rest of the 19th uh, participants that we haven't had the chance to talk with yet, what will happen with them now? So, uh, all people that we presented here, they will get an email. We also have your email addresses, so you will get an email that you should look out for with some further instructions on how to uh, uh, respond and uh, confirm that uh, uh, everything works out for you guys. So, that is the, the process forward for, for, for the lucky winners. But, but the way I see it is that we have like 14,640 winners because we have so much inspiration that has been going on throughout this application period. And uh, it has been so great to see. And with all that inspiration going, I feel a great responsibility also that we continue to to help inspire and support this movement and where people can take uh, learnings from each other and, and share their own experiences and, and actually do stuff out in the winter. So, so I really look forward to, to continue to uh, see the inspiration going. And we also will have a number of events coming up throughout the winter where you can visit uh, our stores and uh, take part of that inspiration. We have uh, events coming up uh, in the summer, Fjellarven Classic. Uh, where where uh, we also learn a lot about nature and uh, where it's more easy to actually get the spot uh, than, than Fjellrev and Polar maybe. But uh, continuing to uh, inspire and share experiences and knowledge, that's what it's all about so that we, we learn more about uh, our fantastic nature and... Uh, uh, Bring, bring on that experience to future generations and uh, take care of what we have. True, and I think um, all the, the applications that we have seen, it spreads so much uh, joy, love, uh, and, and all sorts of other emotions, feelings. And uh, for me, for myself, it has, uh, it's given me a lot of uh, good inspiration for, for winter adventures. And uh, since I've seen so many posts about Polar and this area, I plan for myself now yeah. to go ski touring in the in the same area because it is a fantastic area, and you can do all sorts of uh, fun and nice things in other ways as well. 
True that, yes. true that. So uh, I'm looking forward for a big winter in Stockholm. Uh, I hope we have a lot of snow and uh, uh, what's really special with the area here where I live is when, when it gets cold and it freezes, you can go ice skating on the lakes. And I really appreciate those uh, activities and adventures that you can do around the corner where you live. So that is one of the most fantastic experiences, I think. So that's what I'm really looking forward to. And with that said, Carla, I think it is... Uh uh, it's time to wrap this up, but before we do, we're going to have a look at all the uh, winners yeah, once again. Yeah, so we again. do a rerun of all the winner films. Uh, so, uh, big congratulations. Thank you for all the contributions, all the applications. Thank you to uh, everybody on the jury, everybody on the Polar team. You have been fantastic to work with. It's been absolutely a pleasure. And we will also, of course, make this whole uh, webcast available on YouTube so that you can see it uh, on demand later on with all the winners. So um, thank you. And now we run the, all the winners. Yes, thank you so much. The first five Fjall Raven Polar 2023 participants are the first participant from France. There are a lot of little actions and gestures that I do to reduce polluting impact on the nature. Do some compost, eat more vegetable and local, search water at the source and produce less plastic. The second participant from Germany. My main goal is to help reducing negative impact on the planet and saving the beauty of nature and spreading the message of our climate crisis. I learned to be attached to nothing but being connected to everything. The third participant from the United States. The fourth participant from Taiwan. And the fifth participant from Sweden. Congratulations. The next five Fjall Raven Polar 2023 participants are the sixth participant from the United States. See, I live in this little house. In this oven, you can barely bake a mouse. It's pretty efficient, as you can see, but there's still things they do more sustainably. I've got all this beat up gear. I can make it last another year. Just keep these patches on, wash them in here. Looking so fly, all the haters stay clear. The seventh participant from Austria. The eighth participant from the United Kingdom. The ninth participant from France. My love for this planet pushed me to become vegetarian for five years and told me to travel slowly. I also worked in astronomy. We discovered several exoplanets. Such exciting news. The light. Thank you. The tenth participant from Denmark. Congratulations. The next five Fjall Raven Polar 2023 participants are the 11th participant from Estonia. The 
12th participant from Germany. The 13th participant from Malaysia. Winter is coming. 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 The 14th participant from Colombia. I love challenges that help me to feel alive, love, and free. Challenges remind me to appreciate the small things I give for granted and help me to become more grateful. To do an expedition to the North Pole is a dream for me. It probably represents the ultimate test. The 15th participant from Canada. Congratulations. The final five Fjall Ravenpolar 2023 participants are the 16th participant from the United States. Hey, Chris here, hydrologist, this whose mission in life is to save the planet from, well, us, live a more sustainable life. Wait, 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 wait. Everybody doesn't do this? That sucks. The 17th participant from Finland. Lately, Polar has started to reappear in my dreams. If you do fall and let the sled go. Yeah, that's not the number one rule. You don't let go of the sled, period. The 18th participant from the Republic of Korea. The 19th participant from the United Kingdom. I think that's a dishwasher basket. Tools, pens, makeup. Please take away your rubbish. Dispose of it properly. Recycle. Do what you should be doing to be a responsible adult. And the 20th participant from Sweden. At the end of this expedition next year, I uh, turning 60. So this is uh, my way to celebrate my life and to encourage myself that the best is yet to come. Congratulations.